What the actual hell? This is super lame. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 50th and final episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 205th episode overall titled Good as Gold. We start this episode at the Youth Center where Tommy is teaching Kata to his students. Adam is there too and they're wondering where Jason is at. Emily walks in and they want to ask her if she's seen him, but she immediately says that she hasn't seen him, asking if they've seen him. Then, in a forest, we see Jason Morph running away from Cogs, and his powers are fading in and out, as he states that his communicator isn't working either. In space, Mondo says that once Jason loses his powers, they'll steal them from him and they'll be unstoppable. Then, Jason stumbles upon Rita and Zed with the Cogs behind him, and Rita makes a joke about how Jason looks so much better in red anyways. Then, Rita and Zed call forth the Tangas, and Jason is surrounded on all sides. I wonder if Jason is like, where the hell do these birds come from? Anya and Kat walk in and they don't know where Jason is either. They're all kind of freaking out because they have no idea what's going on with Jason. Then suddenly Mondo and family shows up behind Jason and he rolls out of the way. Mondo and Rita and Zed talk crap to one another and this leads to the Tangas and the Cogs fighting each other. This is actually kind of brutal and weird. Jason takes this opportunity to run away while they're fighting one another. Also there are scenes of brutality of the Tangas just ripping wires out of the Cogs with their beaks. My god. Then we see Bulk and Skull who are talking about how they're real detectives now, but they need someone to appreciate their talents. Then the office door opens and a purple balloon comes in and Skull pops it. There's a note inside and someone named IK wants him to meet them at the park at 4pm. In the youth center, Jason comes in super dirty and he falls down. Ernie and Emily immediately come over and Ernie wants to call an ambulance, but Jason refuses and the rangers take him, leaving. Goldar and Rito join Rita and Zed, and they realize that they're at a stalemate with the Machine Empire. Mondo tells them to just leave then, and Zed agrees, and they just leave. This is clearly some sort of plan for Zed. In the power chamber, everyone is there doing an analysis of Jason. The Gold Ranger powers are leaving Jason, but now they're also taking Jason's life force out with them. That's grim. They have to get in contact with Trey on Triforia right away. Rita screams at Zed in the forest about walking away, and Zed explains that he has a plan to get rid of the Machine Empire once and for all. Then, in space, Mondo and crew have discovered that the rangers are reaching out to Triforia, and they know right away that they're going to try to give back the gold ranger powers. Zordon says that they're not even sure that Trey has been able to reunite into one form yet. I mean, I hope so, it's been like 25 episodes. Then the lights go off in the power chamber, and Trey shows up still split into three. Adam asks if there's anything they can do, and essentially, if there is a beam that could unify Trey back into himself, but it has to go through Aquitar, Triforia, and then back to Earth. This is risky though, because it could just kill Trey and Jason. The Rangers decide they kind of have no choice, and Alpha prints out a map for them to use in order to complete this adventure. In the park, Bulk and Skull are dressed as old women, and they're approached by an Inspector Cousteau, who says that he's here to recruit two detectives to come with him to the coast of France. He Also, he claims that there's no relations with the Pink Panther character. He tells Bulk and Skull that by this time tomorrow, they'll be on the streets of Paris. Don't know if that would work out right with time zones and stuff. I feel like they'd have to get on a plane right now. In the desert, the Trays and the Rangers show up, but they've tripped some kind of alarm out there. Also, this is when I realized that Rocky has been missing this entire episode. Seems like an important thing to have in your season finale. You know, one of your principal cast, but okay. The Quadra fighters are flying overhead, firing at the running rangers. They get to the point, running through the explosions, and Jason gets out the golden power staff. Jason and Trey get into the position, and Cog show up. It's morphin' time! The four rangers fight off the Cogs in the desert pretty easily, where the three Trays and Jason hobble away. Jason is also incredibly weak, unable to really defend himself. Then a morphed Rocky just teleports in, saving them. Apparently they just pulled Rocky away from his martial arts camp. Zordon tells Alpha to fire the beam and we see it bounce off of the different planets before it comes back, hitting the staff. This has restored Trey as the Gold Ranger and he runs off to help the others in their fight. Then over the hill, Mondo and Cogs grow giant out of nowhere. What? The Rangers go to call out their Zord and Trey says that there's no time for this. They have to fight fire with fire, and Trey tells him to hold hands, and then he freaking makes the Power Rangers giant. Rita, Zed, Goldar, and Rito are watching this, drinking some beverages. Jason cheers on the Rangers, and Tommy gets hit down by Mondo. Then of course, Tommy and Trey just tag team Mondo, and he falls down, losing his crown. That's the end of Mondo. At the detective agency, Bulk and Skull explain they got a better offer, so they're quitting working with Stone. Stone is pissed about this. He says that if they walk out, it's all over. They shake hands and they leave to go on a global adventure. Stone swears that they'll be back, sitting down. After they leave, Stone looks on, clearly sad that they actually left. On the moon, Rita and Zed are giving a present to Machine Empire, talking about how it's a peace offering. Then they all get into the RV, leaving. 
The Machine Empire talks about how Rita and Zed are actually not as bad as they thought. And just as Sprocket opens his gift, a freaking bomb goes off, absolutely disassembling the Machine Empire into pieces who scream at them as they drive away. Also, Zed says, we're back. At the lake, Jason and Tommy talk about how hard it is to lose your powers. And Jason says that he's going to have a lot more free time on his hands. Tommy promises that they'll always be friends. Lies. Also, Jason sees Emily and he says things can't be all that bad. And he says goodbye to Tommy walking down to the beach to meet up with Emily. Kat comes up asking Tommy if he's okay. They walk away together, holding hands with each other. The end. This honestly does not feel like a season finale at all. I mean, I guess it technically wraps up everything, but like, dude, Rocky wasn't even around for it. He was only there in suit. Also, what was the point of Jason having to give the Gold Ranger powers back? I mean, I'm genuinely confused. They really could have just had the staff get broken or something instead. I will say this episode is saved by the villain dynamics that are happening between the Machine Empire and Rita and Zed. That is super interesting to me, and I hope it's something that they kind of explore more in the future, because at this point, it's actually more interesting than the Power Rangers themselves. Jason isn't a ranger anymore again, and Zeo has come to a close. So next time, we'll be talking about Power Rangers Zeo as a whole, but until then, may the power protect you.